Hey guys, now in today's video, we're taking a look at the Infimec TX. This is a small Core XY printer that has print speeds of 500 millimeters per second. We're going to take a look at the print quality. You're going to see the perspective of someone who owns a small print farm, primarily bamboo print farm. And we're going to compare the print quality of this small guy, which is a very affordable printer, to some of the big guys that I have running behind me running production work. We're going to compare the print quality. We're going to talk about the features. We'll see if this is something that you'd like to pick up because this guy is a super affordable printer that has great print quality and I think it has great potential too. Let's go ahead and check it out. Now before getting into the actual printer and going over the specs, I wanted to show you the overall print quality and you have to do a Benchy, right? So here is a Benchy that we ran on the printer and overall quality is okay for a Benchy. Not really uh, concerned about the actual quality itself for the actual speed, but you always want to print one to see how good it prints and if there's any defects. It's not a perfect Benchy, but it is, again, I believe that this was like a 16 minute Benchy, which was not bad at all. And I didn't really see much wisping. I didn't really see, you know, anything that I would uh, really be overly concerned about because I don't print Benchies. But this is for those of you who are interested to see what it would look like. Good first layer, and then everything else is, is decent. Not great, but it's decent. Now, this is one of the prints that's on the actual printer that we ran. I just wanted to show you the overall quality of this print. Really, really nice. No stringing whatsoever, but definitely some cool art going on right here. I'm going to show you the sides right here so you can see the overall quality. This looks really good. Um, it did have a brim. I didn't remove the brim. I just wanted to show you exactly how it looked. Uh, no warping. Right? I don't even think that the brim was necessary, but I did not disable it. It was on the actual um, onboard memory or the USB-C stick. But this is the kind of quality that we were able to get on this. Now, I primarily print with Polymaker PLA. So what you see here is Polymaker's matte PLA. Uh, we pr print um, anywhere from 22,000 up to almost uh, over 36 to 40,000 parts um, in our print farm. It's a small print farm. And we primarily print using matte PLA. It's the one that looks the best. And it's for us, again, goes with a lot of the equipment that we create uh, parts for. And what I'm going to share with you in a second now is a couple of parts that we typically print off of our bamboo printers. But I wanted to see how did this printer out of the box compare to bamboo. Now, this uh, printer does use Orca Slicer. And the settings are pretty similar, if not the same. Uh, they did include a couple settings for both PLA, uh, I think there was an ASA and a PATG. I primarily print PLA, most affordable, and it's what we produce um, in our shop. And let me now show you some of the parts that we print. I'm going to show you two jigs. And I want you to take a look at these and see which one of these is the actual bamboo, right? Printed off of an X1 Carbon or one printed off of this printer. All right, guys, so here are the two... Now one of the parts that we print on, you know, now one of the parts that we print in our farm are jigs for creators, uh, for makers, for laser engravers. And just wanted to show you, we have two of these that were printed. One of these was printed on a bamboo X1 carbon, and the other one was printed on the Infimec TX. Which one do you think did it? We're going to get a little bit closer so we can take a look at these. And I just want you to take a look at the quality. We're trying to make sure we keep things in focus for you. So. Take a look at this. This is a jig for dog tags, right? That would be used on a laser, right? You can see over here, there is some elephant foot going on right here, right? It would have to be cleaned up. And then over here, you see the other jig. No cleaning on this one. No elephant foot whatsoever. You see the quality there. If we flip it on the back, what we'll do is we'll bring them both on camera so you can see the back on both of these. So that's what the first layer looks like on each of these. Same filament on each one. So which one do you think is the actual bamboo and which one is the Infomec TX. Well, if you chose this one being the bamboo, you're right. But take a look at the overall comparison here, guys. I think that this 
is a really, really good printer given the actual quality that I'm getting. Again, this is without any tuning. I could probably resolve the, the elephant foot that I have real quick, easily with the actual software. Um, I did talk to the company and they did say that there's some adjustment that needs to be made to the Z. And I could see that that is something that um, I'll need to take into account. But it has the speed that I like. And you can see the overall quality. It's very close to it. And it's important that if I'm shipping out parts that all the parts fit uh, or look the same. So I'm going to move this one to the side because this one's maybe shipped out today or tomorrow. And then I wanted to show you again, uh, again, more samples of the overall quality. So here you can see this one right here. This is another part. And you can see that, yeah, I can feel the elephant foot is there. It's present, right? So we'll need to clean that up. That's easy to, to clean up with a scraper. But outside of that, look at that quality. Not bad. This I can, I can put in a box and ship once I clean that up. So let's talk about the printer and the specs now. So this printer comes, for the most part, pre-assembled. Very similar to what you're seeing with a lot of the printers today where all you have to do is remove a couple screws and the printer is ready to go. Uh, 20,000 millimeters per second acceleration with a 500 millimeters per second print speed. And you can see right now it's actually going through a torture test that I'm printing. I've already printed this before, but I just wanted you guys to see it going in action and printing. Um, it has an independent dual Z, uh, one-click auto leveling. The bed itself... It's not the largest bed, 220 by 220 by 250. And it has also a Core XY type setup with Clipper firmware. I am using Orca. I am controlling this printer remotely uh, through my network. And one of the things that you can get optionally, I wish they had sent this to me because there's a version of this that basically is the TX with a camera and then it has a filter and a fan. So. This version, the one that I have for review, does not include the camera, so I don't, and I can't speak to the quality of the camera. Um, it also would have some extra fans and an extra filter, which would have been great to have for the review, but unfortunately we don't have it. Now, outside of that, you're going to be able to print um, several different material types because you can see that there's something going on here with this kind of hood. This is actually a, a cloth type hood, so it's not really a physical hood. You have glass. And then you have, I would say, like polycarbonate material on the sides, right? That it's this uh, with with all the construction, not really metal, but still decent construction. The door itself, I'm going to open it up. Uh, seems to work well, right? It does open up, and it opens up all the way, right? So, which is something that we've seen from some printers that only open halfway. For those of you who wanted one that would open all the way, this one opens all the way. It does have a touch screen right here, which on the bottom, which you're going to see in a couple seconds. And then it has also the USB is found inside, but the inside is a little messy. While we have printers now that poop, this one kind of vomits. Let me show you why. Right now, what you're noticing here is there's kind of like a mess going on. I left this here on purpose because what happens is as it purges the first uh, print line, basically it kind of spits this in the front. So this is all what's coming through from as it's doing its first line. And we've been doing a lot of printing. I have now put this printer from, um, I would say about four rolls of, uh, of PLA have gone through it. So quite a bit has been printed on it. And you know, as it comes up here, it just spits it out. Very similar to what you would find with Prusa. Prusa uh, tends to do that as well. Now the touchscreen itself that is, and we'll go ahead and take a focus on that. So you have a 4.3 inch uh, touchscreen that's running a Clipper native and the UI is pretty simple. Now uh, there hasn't really been an update to this UI and let me go ahead and get escape out of this um, and you can see what's going on right here. It does show you the icon of what's being printed so you can see that thumbnail and then you can have um, some control changes here. Obviously you can change the fan speed, you can change the temperature of the bed, you know there's all the standard settings that you would expect that you can change. Right now you can see that this print is right now around 69% complete, and it has about 30 minutes more to go. You'll notice that in the inside you have the flip switch. Um, inside, as we get a little bit closer, a couple things that you'll notice that I found, I don't know, kind of like, I, I wish it was there was more finish to it, is you have cables like this. So this cable is connected to this display. I wish there was a way to keep that tucked away. Uh, not really concerned because as you see this bed right here, when this bed goes down, let's make sure that we're focusing on the bed. When the bud comes down, it's not going to hit the actual bottom. It's not going to interfere with these cables. Just don't like the finish. 
Uh, because of how the power supply is kind of raised inside, uh, what I find also is there's a lot of debris that gets collected in here. So you can see, you know, this is all strips of PLA that just come off as we're working in the inside. Now the printer is rel now the printer is relatively quiet. As we take a look at what's going on inside, you can see that there is a print taking place, and the quality. And I will show you what this print looks like in a couple seconds. Is is rather good, right? For this, especially not tuning it just out of the box. I like seeing how well a printer will work, almost as if I would expect it to be an appliance, and I expect it just to work out of the box and to give me some good prints. I prefer not to tinker. I prefer for things to just work, and to work well. And this one, I would say, is close to that category. There are just some small tweaks that I see here. It's not perfect, but it's also not terribly bad. I was really surprised when I got this printer and tested to see how well it worked right out of the box. Now, the thing that you'll see here is also there's a PI sheet. PI is included. I've had no sticking issues whatsoever with this uh, and no glue sticks, nothing like that, even though there's a glue stick indicator here. I've had no problems with it. When it cools off, prints fall off easy. One thing I wanted to mention is that you will see that there's a USB stick uh, here, right? There's your flip switch to turn it on. And in the top here, this is interesting, right? This is kind of has some Velcro on each one of the sides. And this is how you can close or open up this printer. So depending on the type of material that you're printing, uh, you can actually have that open or close. You should be able to print PETG. You should be able to print um, ASA on this. And uh, one of the things I do like is that here you can see uh, your filament coming in and you can actually see the filament running through this. So it's really easy to identify if you have any kind of jams and it's really easy to access them because you can actually grab them right here. Uh, standard Core XY experience, what you would expect from a Core XY printer except this one has some really good print quality for the price point and then also for the fact that it is so small. I wish this was 350, you know, 330, you know, 300, much larger, and then they would have a really significant player with this speed, this quality, and then, you know, I would love to have see some more standard features. Like I think nowadays having a camera as standard for remote viewing and being able to view this remotely, having a mobile app is also, I think, a must have and it's a standard. Now, what you can do too is in that extra kit in the back here, there's actually a carbon filter that would go here. We don't have it because we don't have that expansion kit. But then once you're done, all you have to do is close this up. Now you could, I could give this a little bit more rigidity, this thing right here, because there's actually a, a base that goes inside. I haven't put it on, but all you do is just Velcro it down and then you're good for any kind of material that requires it to be enclosed and for the temperature to grow inside of the printer. Simply, it doesn't have a, it doesn't have a heater, but you know, what's coming off of the print bed is enough. Now on the back of the printer, you do see that you have your filament sensor that's connected, uh, Bowden tube, right? Coming out here, here you'll have uh, filament. Uh, you'll notice here, I was talking about that I'm running uh, Polymaker, uh, Polyterra PLA. See that right there? And then everything gets connected here. You do have a ethernet cable. I'm connected via Wi-Fi and power coming out. I'm actually running this on a solar uh, battery uh, generator just to see also if this is something that you can take to a farmer's market and run prints and, and attract people. And it actually works really well. Now, for those of you who would consider taking uh, something like this to a farmer's market or some type of flea market or any type of market we're going to be selling, uh, the actual printer when running and running at this speed consumes 80 watts. That's just an FYI, so if you want to have an external battery that you can carry and take with you, that's something that you can do as well. All right, so how well did this uh, printer do with this uh, test? It did really well. Um, I am kind of butterfingers. I dropped it, so I broke off some of the tips, but all the tips printed well. Uh, for those of you who are curious on the actual quality, let's go ahead and get a little bit closer to it so you can see what that looks like. All right? You can see that right there. That looks good. I see some artifacts here, right? Uh, there is definitely some elephant foot uh, type issues going on right here. It's a little bit too low, so it's kind of, kind of squished. Something that I'll address a little bit later. You can see some defects here, right? Let me go around here so you can see this. These come out, right? 
lost two already, but they will come out. So I'll push that guy down. This guy down comes out. Not a problem. So you can see how that looks. I think that this is a pass from the test perspective. The overhead, overhead looks good. It's just right here that I saw some, some defects. But besides that, I don't think it's a bad print at all, especially at this price point. So the question that many of you ask, is this a printer to pick up? Would you purchase it? Well, this is a sub $500 printer with, that has fantastic speed, great quality, and it just works. We've been putting it through its paces. We've gone through four rolls of filament, haven't had a failure yet. And I'd say that this is definitely a buy. So if you're looking for a smaller printer, smaller footprint, something that's affordable, and you want it to print, you should check this one out. See you in the next video.